Hello, pop pickers. Um, as you know, it's uh, San Diego Comic Con, and um, <clears throat> obviously we've reacted to Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, which is probably the the biggest the biggest trailer release, uh, mainstream trailer release uh, at the uh, Comic Con Festival in San Diego. But probably one of the most sort of uh, culty, already cult before it's become cult, is the trailer for the new DC Netflix series called The Sandman, which is based on a series of comic books by Neil Gaiman. Now, Neil Gaiman, you'll know from, he was the creative head behind American Gods. Uh, he was the creative head behind Good Omens, though with Michael Sheen. Now, I have to confess, I haven't watched Good Omens. Is it worth watching? Um, I'm not an enormous fan of Terry Pratchett. Wasn't that the thing that um, Neil Gaiman uh, collaborated with Terry Pratchett on? I don't, I'm not a fan of, of fantasy that just skewers itself so that you can't take it seriously. Um, he created the Sandman. Now, the Sandman, I've only read in patches. I always thought it was based upon the candy-coloured clown they call the Sandman. Uh, tiptoes through your room every night. I thought it was based on, on that Sandman. But this Sandman is uh, a character that's called, is one of the endless. I mean, Neil Gaiman seems to be obsessed. If you think of American gods, he's obsessed with godlike, deity-like, conceptual, metaphysical characters or states being manifested as characters. So the other endlesses are things like destiny, death, despair, delirium, destruction. And they're, they're all kind of characters. They all become characters. He turns them into characters. Um, this is a hotly anticipated series. Netflix have chucked a lot of money at, at it. it. They've tried to get this off the ground many times over the years. I was reading an interview with Neil Gaiman about how there would be many manifestations of this. He had to walk away from them. There were some in which they had giant spiders and they developed the spiders and they'd spent lots of money and he just couldn't commit to it. Um, playing the Sandman, I guess, uh, though the Sandman, the character or the main character in the Sandman has many different names and manifestations and iterations. It's a very, as I say, metaphysical is the word. Uh, it stars Tom Sturridge. They went through a casting process of about 700 people. Uh, Neil Gaiman kept talking about wanting someone with extremely high cheekbones, very specific. Um, it also stars Gwendolyn Christie, who I think might play Lucifer or a form of the devil. Uh, and Gwendolyn Christie, you'll know from uh, Star Wars, Captain Phasma. You'll also know from um, Game of Thrones. Do you forget, is it Brion, the incredibly tall um, uh, sort of... It, probably the only character in, in Game of Thrones who had some moral integrity, really, the tall knight. Um, and uh, Charles Dance is in there, even Sanjeev Bhaskar is in there. So uh, there's a lot of British talent in this. It's going to be incredibly abstract. It's going to be incredibly inventive. American Gods, I liked, and then me and Maddie were watching it, and then we kind of got a bit tired. And it was interesting that Neil Gaiman said he lost interest in his own series. He, well, he didn't produce it, but he wrote it, obviously. He kept saying that he'd get sent the scripts, he'd put notes on the scripts, and his notes on the scripts would get ignored. And so he felt that American Gods departed from his original vision quite dramatically. Whereas on this, Neil Gaiman is executive producer, so uh, he's going to take full responsibility for the success or failure of this. So this is The Sandman. Uh, again, hotly anticipated, lots of excitement in comic land for this. So let's, uh, let's check it out and see what's in store. This is coming to Netflix. <laughs> Feeling. My 
my creations do not walk amongst the living, killing mortals for pleasure. Oh, well, you don't think dreams can die? Let's find out. Nightmares do not belong in the waking world. Oh, turns out I fit right in. Dreams don't die. same man the same man the same man um i was getting lots of uh brandon lee the crow there he looks like a goth the lead singer of a goth band doesn't he, he looks like he was singing in the cure back in the back in the 80s a heck of a lot going on there firmly plonked in fantasy land whose perspective i'm guessing he's not an obvious hero he looks so troubled i mean i've never seen someone look more troubled i slightly get concerned that maybe neil gaiman's kind of casting direction of needing someone with high cheekbones means that he's never going to break a smile and we're only ever going to be reminded of his high cheekbones gwendoline gwendoline christie always great always odd she's just such an odd striking presence pro probably because she's so tall the camera struggled to know how to frame her um Sometimes I get that feeling, I was getting good omens moments. I get, I have this terrible prejudice against anything that's fantasy driven that becomes a bit too British or becomes a bit of a sort of roll call of British talent. I know it sounds awful, it's kind of anti our own sort of talent, but as soon as you start to see lots of kind of familiar faces from lots of TV dramas, you start to think, well, don't just become another TV drama. Um, lots of great special effects in there. David Thewlis, always a cracking actor, and apparently, according to Gaiman, plays a villain that makes most of the worst villains in Marvel look like nothing. I, I don't know if we've got a sense of that there. Who was the thing with the mask on? Um, it looks rich, it looks dark, it looks troubled, it looks depressing, and it looks fantastic in many ways. <laughs> 